Angels, angels, angels like you The world needs angels, angels that are happy The world needs angels, angels like you. Angels are a mirror, reflections of you and me in eternity. We are angels exploring humanity. We're up and coming angels, we're baby angels, we're about to be birthed. This is what the ascension is all about. This is our opportunity of graduation because it has been prophesied that there will be a coming in the clouds of glory of an army of angels followed by the new Christed one. And that would be an invasion of the earth if it wasn't us. You see the plan, the plan is with the Sambhataka 
we are going to be lifted, trans graduated as angels, because every human being is destined to graduate as an angel, but the idea is that we, we go up early, we have our graduation, and then we come back in these bodies, into this world as angels, but still as physical human beings, but as fully fledged angels, with the power of angels. And this is it, that we're here to learn humility. Those that are on the first wave will be very humble people, not people who are famous and, and known throughout the world. They're unknown people because humility is so important. If you're an angel in this world and you're not humble, it could be a serious problem for the world because there's so much power involved. So humility is really important. I think we should talk about humility though, David, because not, not, not a lot of people know what humility is. And I, for, for myself, like I genuinely am a very, very humble person. And the reason why I'm humble is because I, I'm a Christ consciousness being. And as a person who holds Christ consciousness, I recognize that every single one of my brothers and sisters is the living Christ. They may, may not be awakened to that yet, but I know because I've been blessed with the eyes to truly see. So every time I meet any of my brothers and sisters, I'm so humbled to be in the presence of such divinity. Mm. And that's what everyone has to realise. It's not, it's not about the big I am. It's about, it's like, wow. It's about, wow, every, everyone is so amazing. Everyone is so divine. Everyone is so precious. And, and when you can truly, truly understand how much God loves each individual soul, then you are automatically humble. Mm. Like... You know, and that is how you, you have to be self-realized mm. to be humble mm. because you have to truly understand like God's love, you know. Mm. So if you haven't really experienced it, like fake it till you make it. And trust me, everyone is a living, breathing embodiment of the mm. highest divinest codes and are worthy of your utter, uttermost mm. devotion and honor and, and love. Mm. Really? Yes, it's a matter of recognizing that none of us are great in our own right. We're only great in the grace of God. That it's it's you know that it's it's the extent to which we manifest the divinity that we are. Everyone is an incarnation of the same divine, but it's the extent to which we allow that divine to come through. And that divine can't come through if there's a great big ego in the way. So basically, as we let our ego go, as we shrink the ego and become less and less egotistical then the divine can come through more and more. And it's very gentle, it's very soft, it's very graceful, and yet it's immensely powerful. And this also, we were speaking about this the other day and about the importance of, you know, emptiness. And, mm. you know, and, and for, for myself on my journey, it was like realising that my deal with God was I'll be empty. I'll, I'll clear myself of my story, of my identification with my story, so that I can approach you as an empty instrument, mm. as an empty vessel. And if you look at all guitars, all drums, all pianos, all instruments are empty. Mm. We must be empty. Mm. And, and then, but the universe abhors a vacuum. Mm. And in that moment of emptiness, when you're truly empty, that is then when the light of the divine Christ can enter mm. and, and fill you. And so it's really, really important, you know, to remember that. that and, and that is automatically synonymous with humility. Like, is, is, you know, is letting go of your story, not being identified with your story. And, you know, and, and being empty in, in each moment, being, being grateful, showing up in each moment from a space of, of, of gratitude instead of lack. And realising that the egoic consciousness is addicted to and obsessed with lack. And so at some point you have to step up and, um, you know, make different choices around what you're, what the, the thoughts that you're going to allow into your, into your precious consciousness. You see, if I take the physics that I, I've developed, I haven't developed it because when I tried to develop the physics, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't think these things through. And so I went to bed and woke up with a solution. These songs, I couldn't write songs like this. They come through me. So I'm just an empty vessel and everything that I've achieved and I've done in this lifetime is merely what has been achieved through me this this divine energy this divine grace that's come through me into this world and that's the state with us all we can't claim uh, uh, the ownership or possession of anything we've done or achieved in this world because it all comes from the divine and that is the true humility just recognizing the truth that it's it's coming through us not from us it's coming through yeah 
that's it and and just find practices spiritual practices that enable you to be empty so meditation any forms of meditation sitting meditation walking meditation dancing meditation yoga meditation anything that brings you into the moment um, that is really really your greatest offering to God is that that you will be present mm. and you will be empty and, and 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 through that the divine grace is is able to fill you and um, this is when then you then become filled up with God's grace and that is mm. what it's all about mm. and that is and then when you are filled up with God's grace you, you you're blessed with the eyes to see as God sees and you will recognize the holiness and the divinity of every single one of your brothers and sisters like it's automatic I, 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 want to, I want to propose a possibility that in the week before Easter, which is called Holy Week, uh, from um, Palm Sunday to, to Good Friday, that we practice emptiness, we practice a week of holiness, and the word hog is the same as whole, which means whole, in the empty, it's the empty space. That during that week, that rather than trying to do anything, we just are empty and allow the grace to be in us. Just have a chill out week, just have a a week when we're not frenetic, not chasing around, not doing too much, maybe enjoying music, being. like just being, just mm. being, just being, and just being open to spirit, open to allow these energies to come through and into us. And mm. it's a good practice of mm. preparation for Samvataka is mm. to practice just being ready, just being, mm. not being too attached to this world and all the things and all our mental obsessions and all our concerns and anxieties, because nothing matters. Nothing really matters. Well, kindness matters. Service love matters. matters. Yeah, but love, love matters. Yeah, that, ma they, that, that matters. That matters. But all the other stuff all we're into worrying, doesn't really. All, all the, the worrying yeah. and anxieties doesn't really matter. Yeah. All, yeah, definitely. And so find a practice just to to be present. That is what it's all about. And then when you really, really stabilize in that practice of being present, then you come into the zero point field. And that is the access point to, act, to being able to access your full multidimensionality and for you to realize that your consciousness is operating concurrently on higher dimensional realms of consciousness, not just 3D. There's 4D, 5D, 6D, 7D, 8D and beyond. Your consciousness is operating concurrently, but you can only access your multidimensionality through the zero point. And the zero point is the, the present moment. That is what the zero point is. It is the present moment. It is the moment where all timelines converge. Mm. The, the present moment. And that is our job as master beings, is to become anchored into the present moment. Mm. And so realise that our thoughts, our worries, they're always pulling us out of the present moment. Mm. And so if you go along that thought train, then you are not anchored in fifth dimensional consciousness. You are not anchored in, in the zero point. And that's okay, but you want to develop um, practices whereby you, you're, you're becoming present. So I would like in this moment now to share my spiritual practice, which is resting as awareness for short moments. So whenever I remember, I'll just stop thinking. If it, even if it's the most fascinating download from the 12th dimension, where, no matter what the thought, if I remember in that moment to take a short moment, I will stop thinking and I will prioritize <coughs> that over the, the completion of any thought form that will, may come. And so because I've been committed to this practice for so long, um, now it's, it's very, very automatic and it's very, very powerful, um, the alignment. And, and, I, and I recommend it for everyone the, basically just that you, you, as soon as you really, really deeply commit to this practice, you are finally, it's like, until you have a practice like this, your egoic consciousness believes it's the master, believes it is in, in the driver's seat of, of your soul. Like, do you know what I mean? But when you have a practice like this, you're saying, no, hold on a minute, we're not gonna just do that automatic knee jerk thing. I'm choosing to take a short moment. So through that very act of making that choice, you are unconsciously communicating to your egoic consciousness, you're no longer in the driver's seat, thank you very much. You are no longer in control. And then eventually it just gives up. It's like, I'm not in control anymore. I'm not in control. And then, and then once you let go of that, then you start accessing much, much, much deeper levels of clarity and um, alignment and connection within your own being. So, oh, sorry, Archie. But it's a highly, highly recommended spiritual practice. And it is my spiritual practice. And I would not be here where I am now without it. And well, so, yeah. that is amazing. Now I know mm. what I'm doing in Glastonbury at this particular moment. Mm. That is such a powerful practice, mm. and I'm going to start practicing it. That is awesome. Mm. Yeah, because it's be you've got to catch the mind out. If you give the mind notice, um, at quarter past three, I'm going to tell you to stop. The mind will do everything in its power to keep, yeah. you know. But 
uh, Jen's practice is so brilliant because it's spontaneous. It's you not, know, yeah, it's not my practice. It's an ancient. It's, um, ancient. it's an ancient. Um, what is it? It's kind of like Zen meditation. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like deep, deep, old, ancient Tibetan wow. practice. Wow. Yeah, brilliant. it's very high level. But it's very simple, you see, and that's why the mind will often reject it because the mind likes to jump through hoops to be yeah. enlightened. Yeah. It likes to be very complicated, make enlightenment mm. very complicated, and that's why no one gets it because it's very simple, very very simple. It's I the love opposite. that. It's the opposite of complicated. Absolutely. You know, just just rest as awareness for a short moment and just yeah. just do that, and you know, and 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 choose choose to not be identified with your story. If you find yourself like regurgitating your story because you're wanting to get sympathy from someone, um, this is taking you out of the present moment and this is taking you out of fifth dimensional consciousness. So these are really important practices, but notice that there's an addiction within all of us to to want to you know to get the violins out and to really want to go for the old sob story because it's just, it's been it's been pretty much hell for all of us, you know, in this third dimensional matrix. We've been, you know, We've been whatever attacked from left, right, and centre. So of course, it's been it's been it's been brutal for all of us. But we just have to accept that. But and at some point for myself, I was like, I had a very deep, complicated story with much family, you know, issues and stuff like that. And and then at some point on my awakening journey, I realised that I was never ever gonna resolve it. Like I was never gonna come to an intellectual resolution of my story. I, w I wasn't going to understand it, so at some point I had to. Re I realised I had to just put it down, and um, and then the moment I put it down, I was like, oh my god, I could have put that down 20, 15 years ago, and like saved myself an extraordinary amount of grief because that moment when I really truly committed to put my story down and to no longer ever pick it up and dissect it and you know flash it around for sympathy or whatever, um, that moment that was the beginning of my of my true true awakening. You know, and um, yeah, so I think that that is that is our, our duty to God or, or what we promised God that we would do is be empty and to be aware of those moments when we're, we, we, we're identified with our story and, you know, and choose not to be, choose to be empty, choose to not go for the sympathy because what the world needs is role models. The world doesn't need more victims like it really doesn't. Do you know what I mean, brothers and sisters? It needs more role models, and I'm, that's I'm, I'm a role model purely because of that fact. Like I've come from the shit, I've come from the mud, I've come from all of it. You know, heavy, heavy, dense stuff. But I still chose to rise and to put my story down, um, regardless of how how dense that story was. So this is inspiration to all of us. Like I, I just came to the conclusion that I'd never resolve it. So may as well put it down, not pick it up again. And that was the beginning of my real, real, true stabilisation. Mm. Is that inspiring, David? Very inspiring. Oh, good. I like to Absolutely. inspire. Absolutely. I'm blown away by that. Because it's like with the ascension, it's, it's not what we do for ascension. It's what we don't do. It's not who we are. It's what we not are. I mean, it's like, ascension's like at the rising of a balloon. You know, the more you've got in the balloon, the less likely it's going to rise. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> the oh, yeah, emptier we good. are, we've got to be lighter than what helium. You know what I mean? Lighter than hydrogen. We've just yeah. got to lighten up and let go. And it, yeah. it's just, it's going to be okay. It's like, we don't even have to think about it because there's nothing to think about. I just love that idea of just, of the not thinking. Be you know, empty. Of, it's just like, fun. let yourself off the hook. I see. Relax. Brilliant. Like, what God wants you to do is relax. Literally, your egoic consciousness will be like, oh no, I've got to do this, I've got to think about that, I've got to worry about this, this is a ch children and blah, 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 what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Like, that is how your egoic consciousness like has been conditioned and orientated to be. But what God really wants you to do is just relax. Just be, just be empty. You don't have to be holding the entire weight of the world in every single moment. Mm. Like, give yourself permission. Take this as a sign from the universe that you have officially got permission to, like, be empty and to relax and to just to be in that. How's that feel, Liam? Feels right, yeah. Does that feel yeah, right? I'm doing it. Liam's doing it. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I feel, yeah, that's, that's, that resonates, doesn't it, David? It does, absolutely. Give yourself, and, and when I found that out, and I was like, oh my God, I could have done this such a long time ago, and then you realise well, that's true, when the Buddha awakened, he laughed, because the reason why he laughed is because he could have done it, like, 20 years ago. He didn't have to go through that samsaric, third-dimensional loopity-loops forever and a day. You could have just 
put your story down and realise it's never going to be resolved. I had my bag of shit, you've got your bag of shit, you've got your bag of shit. If we all opened the bag, we'd all just want our own. We'd all want to keep our own. If we saw each other's, we'd be like, oh no, I'll just keep my bag of shit. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So we've all got it. So you're not going to be able to like make it all nice and clean. It just is a bag of shit. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the mud. That is the mud from which our consciousness rises from. Yeah. And that is the definition of a master. Mm. It's one who is not identified with the mud, with the shit. It is one, one who has, has transcended that identification. Mm. That's what it's all about, brothers and sisters. Mm. So, we've got an enlightenment SOS, haven't we? We have, we have, we have. So David, is there anything about the event that you want to talk about? Because everyone wants to know about the old event. Got any inside information about the Sambatica? Well, yes, I, 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 I think, you know, we've, we've got to be ready now. The, um, the sunspot activity began in, in, late, in late last year, so we're back into the five-year, um, five-and-a-half-year cycle of sun, sunspot activity, which means that um, Sambatica time is here again. The, the thing is, the reason why the scientists are getting a little bit jittery is because <coughs> the... Um, probability of a Samvartika um, is 12% in any 10 years. In any, it's an 11 year cycle. There's, there's an, uh, five and a half years of the sun being quiet and five and a half years of the sun being very active. And so in that 10, 11 year cycle, there's um, 12%. So the last Samvartika was 1859. So we're kind of long overdue for another one. And uh, also they're anticipating swarms of flares, swarms of uh, coronal mass ejections um, in, this, in this time frame. There was a very interesting program. I didn't get to see it because I was giving a talk at the College of Psychic Studies last Friday. That's the 19th, 9 o'clock. It was on Sky and it was called Power to the People. So if you get a chance of looking at that, it's only a drama, but it was all about, based on the Sambatica, what <laughs> the government trying to cope with the with the national grid going down. That's so fun. we don't want to get into any fear because the point is that that doesn't involve us because what we're doing at that time is we're just emptying and letting go and accepting that the world does need a change. There is, there is need for a, a, a quiescence, a, a, a period of quiet and, and we're all, we've all got a little bit too frenetic and we've got a little bit too full of ourselves and it's just like a cooling down period um, so that the great transition, the great change can come. So we don't have to worry about, about what's going to happen in the world. We've just got to simply, I don't think physical preparation is appropriate. I think it's spiritual preparation of just letting go and following the practices that Jen is recommending of quietening the mind, just periodically just saying no to thinking and just standing back and witnessing, witnessing ourselves from a position behind the mind. Um, so that we're not controlled by our minds. I think that's so important at this time. Mm. I, absolutely, David. Um, yeah, thank you so much. There was, I was going to just, something just flashed into my head of uh, an importance, but it just, um, sorry, it just went, was there anything else that you wanted to say? No, no. Um, so, have you got any questions? You want to it's a constant process, isn't it? You've got to do that all the time. What's that? You've got to remind yourself not to think. Or what's um, that practice that you shared with everyone? Remember, when, when you got us all to meditate? Remember? And you said, think. Do you know? I can't remember. And, and it was so powerful. And you got us all to meditate. And then you said, right, now watch your thoughts. And then oh, yes, said, yes, so yes. So yes that was it? brilliant. I think, I think we should do that. That's, that's very, a good idea. That, yeah. that's, that, that, that's it. Listen to your thoughts. Yeah. So in a sense, that is the same practice that Jen is practicing, mm. is periodically just stop thinking and listen to your thoughts. Be the listener of your thoughts. And you just find your thoughts dissolve. Should we just do it? For yeah, like let's just do it let's now. Just do it. Everyone close your eyes and just listen to your thoughts.
It's incredible, isn't it? Uh, just they just there. scarper. Mm, they yeah. scarper, don't they? Yeah, they're all the same. Yeah. That's that's a phenomenal practice, and um, that really, really touched a lot of people the last time we shared it, David. Yeah. So thank yeah. you so much for sharing that. Um, I just I just wondered if you knew anything about Bridget um, because we're, we're coming up to in bulk tomorrow's yeah. in bulk. Do you know much about Bridget? I'm afraid I don't. I'm right? Are you are you connected at all with the with you know the the um, the myths of Avalon in any way and the Lady of the Lake and stuff like that? Uh, it's I have to admit that it's not my field. It's not your no, field. No, no. <laughs> not my lake, so to speak. <laughs> So it's like, are you, you're more connected to the Ashtar Command, is that right, Correct, David? Correct, yes, that's more... Could that's you tell us a little bit about your connection with the Ashtar Command? Yes, um, the, the, uh, wor the, the word um, Ashtar means Ash Star. And uh, the thing is that in the Hebrew, Arcturus, which is the name of the star in the Buddhist constellation, um, that's so important in terms of ascension, is uh, Arcturus, and so you hear of We the Arcturians by Norma, Milano, Norma Milanovic, her book. Um, so the Arcturians, um, in a sense, the, the name that the Hebrews give to that particular star is Ash. Ah. And Ash, Ash uses the Hebrew um, uh, name for, his, for the star, which in a way is more authentic than the, the Persian because, of course, this, the Hebrew language is a sacred language, it's an inspired language. So he, he calls himself Ash Star to identify where he comes from, that particular star. And after the whole idea is when we go through our ascension, um, we come back into this world for a short period of time to help the earth go through the transition, to help our brothers and sisters prepare for the second and the third waves. But eventually when it's all over and the earth is cleansed and the new, new age has begun and what have you, most of us will be um, going off to assignments in the universe. And we go to Arcturus or with the, the Ash Star. We, we actually go there for our, to receive our commissions. And that comes from Edgar Casey. That's one of his readings. Said that oh, that's we, fascinating, we, David. After ascension, we go to big waves, with the second and third waves, because every human soul is precious to God. Every human soul is holy. Mm -hmm. Every human soul has got that same opportunity to go through this amazing transition of graduation as an angel. Mm, that's so beautiful. And I think the most important thing that we can do is talk about preparation, and that has exactly been the content of this video, because we don't know when the Samvatika event no. is going to be, it, you know, and it is highly dependent on the mass collective consciousness and the number of people that have stabilised in fifth dimensional consciousness and have arrived yes. at zero point. I think that's a very important yeah. point. There is no certainty or guarantee that Samvatika is going to happen at this time. None at all. Anything anyone says in this about 2020, 2021, 20, 2022, it, it's just probability, possibility. But it's the fact that there is a possibility and a strong probability that we're preparing ourselves. But it doesn't mean it's gonna happen. So the thing is that every time this cycle begins, then the, the generation in that cycle need to get ready in case it happens. Yes, so we don't know, but all, you can, all we can all focus on is becoming the, the most magnificent version of ourselves. And that is by, you know, losing this identification with the story, finding practices to become master over the egoic consciousness, mm. realise that you, you know, your deal with God was to be empty. You said, mm. God, all right, in, in order to attain mastery, I'm going to focus on being empty. So may we all just realise that, that that is the greatest preparation mm. that we can make mm. that will bring this timeline of, of the solar flash and and who knows, you know, about that. I think that what I really feel at the moment is that 2020 is very much going to be and is the year of disclosure. And when I say disclosure, I mean us finding out about the horrific and heinous crimes of the, of the elite and also about the fact that there's been a huge amount of off-planet technology that has been um, used by the elite. Mm -hmm. that, that actually has been denied to humanity. There's current technologies such as these uh, holographic med beds, mm. which, uh, do you know about these, David? These well, what I would like beds. to say about this is that we mustn't be in judgment. The thing is that there are two teams, there's the black T-shirts and the white T-shirts, and this sets up the duality 
uh, on this planet and there's meant to be a duality because life is based on electricity and you have to have polarity for, for electricity to work. So the thing is that we need the tests, the temptations and also, you know, a lot of people are very fascinated by the psychic but that in itself can be quite dangerous because we don't know what's out there. So we're protected in a way a lot by, by the materialistic civilization and, you know, it's it's really important that we, we appreciate that everything that happens, good, bad or indifferent, is for our best interests, for our edification, for our learning, all the suffering. It's rather like at the moment, you know, I've got a toothache. I had a, a tooth pulled out and a root's left in there and, 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 and it's just... It's just a pain in the tooth, you know, and yet I know that that's happened at this time because, you know, I'm meant to experience pain at this time. If I've got to go through pain, fine, I can take paracetamol and reduce it. But, you know, I know I've got to just endure the pain because that's part of my process. So, you know, if things happen to us. It doesn't mean you've just got to suffer the pain and not take paracetamol. But, you know, paracetamol wears out and I can only take it once every six hours. And I can't take the ibuprofen because of my stomach. So I have to suffer four hours of pain, you know. In the, and, and it's just like, rather than me really getting upset about it or angry, I just accept it as part of my process, you know. And, and that, that, that's it. Whatever's happening to us is perfect in our evolution. So we haven't got to do anything. We've just got to be accepting of what happens to us. Well, that's exactly right. And, and, and our understanding that, like, your present moment right now, is the very very perfect circumstances is the mud that you could say with which the lotus rises from Correct. your your exact situation like every single thing that is happening in your life has been perfectly orchestrated to to truly truly wake you up and for you to realize that i am not this story i am not this 3d identified being i am <coughs> this vast multi-dimensional angelic avatar soul who is actually a daughter or son of god the, of the highest of the, the highest, you know, that's who I really, really am. And so it, it's time for us all to awaken and, 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 you, and, and this moment, exactly this moment holds the, the perfect codes for you to, to truly, mm. truly awaken. Mm. It's a very, very good point that. that. And that was when I had my awakening, I was like, oh, wow, this moment. God, I never thought this moment was like going to be the perfect moment <laughs> for me to wake up in because it was no different from yesterday. But it was, turned out it was the, the perfect moment because it was pretty, pretty shitty, <laughs> that moment. So, well, you, you can't you, wait for it to be perfect. Did you know the moment it was going to happen? Did you know Sorry? the moment was going to happen or did it just come and hit you like a... No, well, I was, I was sort of like working towards like being totally stabilised mm. in, in, you know, in higher consciousness. Mm. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So when that moment came, yeah, I rejoiced. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that, this <laughs> is the whole thing about these moments, you know, we can't make them happen. And well, we you can. I did. I did make it oh, happen. Oh, That's I see. what I'm saying. I did make it happen yes, I because I realised that I was addicted to um, a, like a narrative about myself that mm. was quite victim orientated. Mm. So I had a certain relationship with language that kept on perpetuating a story that I did not want to be living in. Mm. So my awakening was like, oh my god, I'm creating it. I'm doing. I'm creating this. I will, so if I'm creating it, I have the power to stop creating it. So I made a commitment to stop speaking that narrative, that victim narrative. Do you understand? Uh, yes. uh, and that was my empowered choice to put down my story, to never, ever, ever pick it up uh, again. Yes, that's what I was I, trying to say is that it's not what we do, it's almost like not what we don't do. In other words, what Jen did is she put her story down, yeah. which is, in a sense, choosing not not to follow the story so it's like a letting go mm. it's like we don't want to get ourselves all tensed up and oh god god i'm not ready for ascension how am i going to ascend and what's going to happen when they'd like no no just mm. let go of everything and let it come to us you see just mm. let it happen get on with our lives and remember the only thing that matters is love mm. and, and be a role model be a yeah. role model to everyone around you your mm. you know your brothers and sisters and all your community be a role model of one who has transcended mm. you know the, the the matrix and the matrix is the mud it's the, the programming or all the you know the whole entire programming of our society but it's not who we are so but society isn't going to give you permission to transcend it you have to make that choice but like i had to make that choice individually mm. there was no scripture there was no teacher there was no organization that was beckoning me to to wake up and be empowered mm. 
Mm. But, and, and, but I think I was waiting for that. that. And I think that's part of our programming is that we're waiting for that mm. guru or, or angel or something outside of ourselves to give us permission. Yeah, but yeah. I was like, but and so I was like waiting, 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 and it never came. And I just, and I was like, oh my God, I could have done it all along. Yeah. Well, it, it's kind of um, <clears throat> in the Ascension uh, series of tapes, uh, Michael the Archangel was saying that, you know, we have to be like an 18 volt battery. You can't charge a 12 volt battery up with a 12 volt battery. You have to charge a 12 volt battery up with an 18 volt battery. In other words, the higher voltage charges up the lower voltage. So it's our state of being. If we are charged up, that we don't have to do anything, you see. We don't have to say anything. You just go to the supermarket and everyone in the supermarket will be touched by your aura, mm -hmm. you see. So it's just by the state of being. And that is where this emptying comes in. Because Absolutely. if we just let go and allow ourselves to be empty vessels so we can be filled with that divine love, mm -hmm. it's like that 18 volt battery it didn't do anything to get itself charged up. It just got charged up. It was just available to be charged. And once it's charged, it could then charge up the 12 volt battery. So as we empty, as we allow ourselves to become, in a, in a sense, ascended in the moment. You see. Well, that's exactly right, David. Ascended in the moment. Yeah. And that is the simplicity of enlightenment. Yeah. It, it's just right there. Yeah. Every single moment we yeah. can be empty. Yeah. We make that choice to just to be present yeah. and to be grateful and to count our blessings. Yeah. You know, to show up in the moment with that vibration, yeah, yeah. as opposed to the egoic narrative, which is is obsessed with lack. Yeah, yeah. So that that is the very very like yeah. point of enlightenment right there. So time to sing a song now. Yeah, I'll sing. Something. I just want to also say, yeah, not just with the thoughts. It's like when you're doing things, like when you're on your device and you like you've got this job that you know you need to do. Yeah. And like things just. More and more things go wrong because you start to get more and more stressed out about it. Yeah. But if in that moment you can just choose to step back from it yeah. and just come back to it another time, yeah. then you'll be alright. Yeah, that's a really, really good, good practical tip when, like, if your energy field is creating, like, sort of confusion on technically, just to step back from it and yeah. you, you'd be right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I push it do push it but I know I need to just like step back as soon as the first intuitive thought comes in yeah where I'm like not enjoying it I've just got to instantly yeah really step back. yeah really really listen to your body uh, yeah that that just uh, yeah I just like realized that you know who I truly am is God's daughter and my true true essence is like a little girl really and so I treat myself and honour myself always. My relationship with myself is how God perceives me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so that's how I perceive me, is how God perceives me. So I'm always on duty to take care of my, my divine self, like in every single moment. And if something feels like too much or not right, I will always, always say something. <coughs> I always, always step up in protection of my, of my little girl, my divine self. And I think that that has fared me very, very well in this life. And I'd love to pass on that inspiration. That makes God so happy when we treat ourselves like the little children that we are. And I'd, that's my prayer that everyone starts treating themselves. And really understanding that we're such sensitive creatures. You're so precious, every one of us. That you must listen to yourself, your beautiful self, and be guided.
this great sin down the gods were drawn into tiny babies the gods were born the sun to earth the gods were thrust to learn David, that was phenomenal as per usual. 
Um, so I just put a little message out on the route to see if anyone had any questions. So I think we'll just see if there's any questions and then we'll end on the St. Germain's Raphael number. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. Oh, Joseph Kinley, please join us. Yay, he's all the way from Peru. No questions. No questions there. Okay, I'll yes. refresh it. Well, we're going to play... Um, Hello, Tom. What will happen after the event and the best way to prepare? I think you've covered the latter. So, David, after the event. Well, after the event, um, we uh, come back. We come after the um, the the first first event, the the, the um, Sambatica event. Um, we come back into this world, but. Uh, as graduated angels, we're still in our physical bodies, but it's it's like having a near-death experience. It's a very profound dream, but it's it's like we've really been somewhere, and we come back back into our bodies, but we come back with powers, powers um, like Jesus had and uh, Sai Baba had to to manifest um, food uh, for the people that are going through a challenging time because the electric's down. <laughs> if you see what I mean, so. Um, the, in my book Awaken, I explain how these miracles work. They're not miracles, they're just a super energy science. And I explain oh, how, how they work. Yeah. So you do need a copy of my wow. Awaken book. You can get it on Amazon. And it explains how Jesus, in there very clearly in terms of the new physics, how Jesus fed the 5,000, how, um, you know, uh, and how uh, Sai Baba worked his miracles. And also, we're going to have a technology We'll be in the beam the whole time. So when we're down here, because we really belong in the fifth dimension, in the higher dimensions, we'll be in a beam and we'll be down here working. But this is where, you know, levitation is possible because you're in the beam. We're not bound to gravity. It's more like the beam holds us here. And we'll have a piece of jewellery, like a ring or a pendant. You just touch the jewel and the beam is activated and we're out of here. And then we project beam ourselves up, back in again. Beam me up, Scotty. Beam me up, Scotty, very much. Again, that technology is explained in terms of my vortex physics. Nothing strange, nothing miraculous. This is just the future of the physics. I mean, we're all working with mobile phones at the moment. If I, if I try to explain a mobile phone to someone in, you know, 100 years ago, they'd think I'm Barney. David, so, do you know about where mobile phones come from? No. Do you know about the Roswell crash? Oh, I know about the Roswell crash, That's yeah. where they came from, oh. and all these... All these, um, all these technologies. Yeah, all these yeah. technologies came from the Roswell... Oh, so. Yeah, Roswell well, crash. I, I'm just saying, we're going we're, we're to be coming back with a lot of technologies, but the beauty is the physics that explains these technologies already exist. So that's pretty important so people can get their heads around what's happening. But, you know, um, Jen talked about free energy, um, uh, uh, the free energy technology. Yes, we'll be working with the free energy technology, but it'll tend to be local. So um, one of the things we'll be doing after the event is... Uh, shepherding people onto farms people will be moving by the thousand onto farms and then they'll be living in tents and in vehicles and stuff like that and each farm will have a um, an ascended master and it'll be it'll be like paradise on these farms it'll be like it'll just be like a festival you know how glastonbury set up once a year as a festival this will be a permanent festival so it'll be a time of celebration everyone will be fed They'll be rejoicing. And as well as these farms, which will be light centers preparing people for the second um, wave of ascension, we're going to have this road show rolling from town to town, city to city. And it'll be growing larger and larger. And people have seen people like Prince Charles and uh, Richard Branson, people like that, you know, Russell. They'll all be joining these road shows. So people, the road show will be rolling and it'll be like um, a snowball effect. We'll be gathering people as it rolls from town to town, city to city, village to village. So there'll be the mobile um, celebration as well as the farm sedentary celebrations. And, you know, it's like people will be saying, well, how will the vehicles in this roadshow be rolling if there's no fuel? Well, actually, again, we use the same technology to keep the fuel up in the tanks. There'll be no shortage, no shortage for us guys at all, because we, 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 we basically, it's like a laser beam. You beam the super energy through the template of a bit of fuel in the tank of a vehicle. And what happens is the super energy condenses through 
that atomic matter and just replicates it. So you've got a, a, a half empty tank or a quarter tank, a little bit of diesel left in a tank and the tank is full. You see what I mean? And then we drive on. So we never run out of fuel. We never run out of food. It's the magic porridge pot. You know, Aladdin and his lamp, all these fairy stories, they're based on fact, which Jack I explain in my book, Awaken. Yeah, that's fascinating, David. So why don't we have those te that technology now? Because the time isn't ripe. Because this is not the Sat Yuga, this is the Kali Yuga. The Kali Yuga finishes with Sambhataka and the Sat Yuga begins. And then the gods return. We are the gods here in human form, here to overcome through battle, pain and storm. You see, th this is the, 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 the words to that song I just sang were the starseeds coming. You know, we were, we were arrogant pricks and we've been brought down here for a bit of humbling, being little tiny babies. But we've been through the 26,000 year cycle and now we're ready to come back again. We return, but we return a bit more humble than we were last time. And we come back, the gods return, and we, we're going to shepherd humanity through their own ascension. It's going to be so beautiful and so exciting. So there's nothing to fear, but it all depends upon <coughs> you being ready to volunteer. It depends on you being willing to let go of everything in this world to surrender and step into the light when the invitation comes. Mm. David, you named some questionable names on the roadshow, Prince Charles and Richard Branson. Well, yeah, it's just that the people who had the vision of these roadshows said that they saw these sort of people joining in. But they're, they're, not, they're not people that have joined the first, they're not, they haven't been on the first session, wave of ascension and return. They're just physical human beings who are actually joining us. So a lot of high profile people will be joining in on, they'll be getting ready for the second wave, you see, because they're all good people at heart. All these good people, you know, Prince Charles, Richard Branson, they've got good hearts and they want to be involved in this, you see. No one wants to be left out. I mean, it's going to be the whole world. Do you know the whole world's going to be turned into heaven, into paradise? Well, it already is, but it's just going to have a little A tweak. little bit of a tweak, yeah. It's just going to be cleaned up a bit, you see, but it, it's just like, it's the whole world an ashram, the whole world celebrating But you know, heaven is fifth dimensional rejoicing. consciousness and we are each responsible for holding that heavenly vibration. Correct, yeah. But yeah, and that's the most important thing, you know, yeah, is for yeah, us to really, yeah. it's not about anything, it's never ever about external no. out there. It's yeah. about us realising, taking responsibility that we are multidimensional beings who have been programmed to be identified with this 3, 3D matrix that is not who we are to transcend that program yeah. and to identify as a divine avatar angelic soul that we truly truly are yeah. and um, you see for a lot of the people on the second wave they'll be in a community say you got a thousand people on a farm and there's an ascended master when the time of the second wave comes that ascended master will be able to take the whole community out of space time so you accelerate the speed of energy and all whirlpools of matter uh, of that farm and and whatever the big event is, those people aren't touched, you see. And then, uh, so it's, it's almost like the whole community can go into the light, do you see? Absolutely. And, and when it comes to the third wave of ascension, you see again, everyone's taken into the light so the earth can cleanse herself, you see. Mm -hmm. And then we, we, the light just dissolves and we're in the new earth. This is the vision. This is the vision. It's like there's no cataclysm for us. There's no, as, as, as it says in the Bible, you know, not a hair on the head of the just will be disturbed by what's happening. Not a hair on our heads will be disturbed. We've nothing to worry about. It's just so long as we go into the light, so long as our priority is the light rather than the dark, but so long as we're, we're you know, it's a spirit and, 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 and we, we just surrender to the call from heaven when it comes. What about the really evil people, David? Are they well, you know, we have to be very careful of judging really evil people. The really evil people are fulfilling their dharma to hold the duality, to hold the, 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 the polarity of dark, you know. And the thing is, they, they come into the light. It's like if you read conversations with God, you know, even Adolf Hitler's in, in the light. He's come into the, he's, he did his job and he, he held his dharma, which was the most terribly evil thing that anyone's ever done on planet Earth, just about. But he's not judged. It's not for us to judge good and evil, it's for us to recognise those polarities exist, people choose their polarities, but everyone is holy in the sight of God. I absolutely know that, that every single human being has that potential of the Christ consciousness absolutely. and has the potential for atonement mm. and for retribution and restoration. I know that. Mm. But you, if you have 
enacted deplorable acts like you have to atone you're not just going to be forgiven like mm. you have to choose that path mm. of of seeking retribution and forgiveness and then if you are a truly organic child of god mm. who has um committed horrific crimes then there is a chance there definitely you, you your soul ca will be saved oh yes yes but what i've recently learned about which has caused me some kind of weird confusion was artificial intelligence mm. do you know about all the well, artificial yes, clones. clones and all that, that well the so point is a, the point know. is this that everyone has to choose you know there's that potential for the darkest most evil being to choose the light but they still have to choose. People choose their polarity. So nothing's going to be laid on to anyone. So if someone wants to stay in that negative dark state, that is their choice. And then when the planet is cleansed, they go to the polarity where they're going to be with their mates in the same state. So mm. everyone goes to the same place, you know, to the, the most rightful place mm. that's for them. Yeah, but okay. everyone has, okay. I tell you, people are going to be wake, woken up by Sambhartika and by the, the presence of the, uh, of the ascended beings, you know, anyone who wants to stay out in the cold, the dark and the misery, I mean, they've got to be really insane. Hmm. Mm. But there will be some. Oh, yeah, there's, there's always going to be, there's always going to be a tiny minority who's going to be out there. Don't worry about them. Let them do their own thing. Yeah. Let them kiss their own dirt. I yeah. imagine they'd get, like, disintegrated by the sun. Well, I, the, the thing is the this, that, the no, there's, there's, you know, there's a place for everyone in the universe. There's a perfect place for everyone. It's like Julian of Norwich said that hell is the deeper level of God's love. We shouldn't judge it, you know. If people end up in that darkness for a period... That is their choice, and that is the best place for them to be, for their, for their, the, the, you know, for them to evolve. But we don't judge it. We don't. Judge. It's not like evil. Yeah, it's just evolving. a place and a space for people to just really confront themselves mm -hmm. and to really, you know, decide they want mm -hmm. to be different. And you have to understand, you know, we are all one. Like we are truly, mm -hmm. truly all one. And so, if you are aware that somebody has committed those acts, then you have to do the hokoono and heal that within your That's own right. self. That's right. And understand that we're all human beings. Yeah. And, and if someone has done that, then we, you know, we have to take responsibility for that. So a very practical thing is hokoono. I'm sorry. Yeah. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. That is Yeah. And that yeah. is, re this is again, like how we transcend mm. the, the mud mm. Of, of, mm. Of, of, this, of this potential hell realm of the third dimensional matrix. Mm. So it, it's very it's very high level teaching, but in you know when I had my my truly truly awakening experience in the Himalayas, and I understood about oneness, like I, I absolutely understood that about all souls, like every soul is precious to God, mm. every single soul that was ever 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 created, no matter what act you do, you are God's son and you are God's daughter, mm. and you are precious to God. And if that Imagine soul wants, that is the truth. If that soul wants to come into the light, the light is there for yeah. that soul. That's and, and and God created this realm to explore these these you know horrific um, sort of vibrations of duality and darkness. Mm -hmm. So, but that doesn't ever ever take away from God's love. Mm -hmm. That like that mm -hmm. really is the truth. I get that, that would happen with souls and like yeah. real human beings yeah. that have probably had that act done on themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what about like clones? Well, the thing is that <coughs> I, I think Sambhartika, my sense is Sambhartika will come before AI and all that cloning that really gets established on this planet. No, but it's, it is, it's already established, happening. David, underground yeah, bases, they're, they're yeah, deep but they underground. Still, they still depend, uh, you, you know, don't underestimate to which the extent to which all this stuff depends on electricity. And don't forget that there's this event coming, the pole shift, where it's no good being in underground bases when this great planetary cleansing those people that are sitting in their underground bunkers with their AI and their clones, the, the whole thing will be just disintegrated. But it's, the planet's going to be cleansed from your reality, you see. So there's nothing, it's almost like it's not for us to concern ourselves with that. It's for us just to sort of keep our focus, you know, on the light and where we're going, do you see. And then everything balances itself mm -hmm. out. Yeah. yeah. So you said the, f the first wave, people go in spaceships, people go off planet. And then the second wave, it's like then road shows start happening. And well, fields the, 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 the basically the first place. wave are lifted into that space that's called heaven, whatever that space is. Yes, it could be a biosatellite, it could be the Merch Merkabar, but rather than getting it, it's lifted into heaven where they meet, you know, like where you went and you mm. met 
Bob Marley and John Lennon and Jesus, mm -hmm. you see. So we meet those who've gone before us and we are prepared, but because we've got bodies, we, we come back into this world with our bodies. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is that we then work and get the road shows going, get the light communities going and prepare people for a second wave. And the second wave is like a creaming off of the people who are ready. And then whoever's left, um, the world gets really difficult externally. So for those real hard cases, we're still here, we're still offering them the opportunity. And then there's the third wave, which is the great rapture that, you know, a lot of the people who won't be ready in the second wave are the people deeply embedded in religion. You see, oh, so religion is going to really be holding them back. But because the leader of the of the ascended masters is Elijah, his job is to really work with the religious people to really help them see. Look, this is the fulfilment of prophecy. Mm -hmm. This is, and so that on the third wave they have their opportunity. And the third wave of ascension is is the Christian rapture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of um, when I was 18 and I read the book called Shakti Gawain, uh, Creative Visualisation. And in this book, she guides you to meet your higher self, your higher angelic self. And um, when I was 18, I met my higher angelic self. And, and, sh and they, she guides you to ask them their name. And the, the divine feminine aspect presented itself. And, and, I, and I asked her what her name was. And she said, Elijah. Your name is Elijah. Yeah, that's what she said. My guardian angel's name is Elijah. I swear to God, right? Isn't that amazing? Yeah, isn't this amazing? And then the masculine angel came and he was dressed like a warrior, like a really beautiful golden warrior. And I said to him, what's your name? And he said, Christopher. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, and so I've had so many signs all along my life, mm. especially with Christopher. Mm. Um, but now it feels like the Elijah thing. Is really isn't it interesting? Because, you know, what Jen has been through is what I went through because... I've been identified with this soul linkage with Elijah as well. Really? Yes, because Elijah, the spirit of Elijah is coming down through people like me and Jen mm. to prepare people for the first wave. Oh, that, isn't that interesting? That's what it is. You see, that this is all linked together. Elijah, see, I, and I never, I didn't know anything about Elijah. It was such a random name for yeah. me, aged 18. Isn't that amazing? Uh, I honestly didn't know anything. Yeah. 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 That's a link, you see, between that, us. Isn't that a but link? Yeah. Elijah, the spirit that overrides Elijah is Raphael. You see, the, you get the, Jesus and John the Baptist. Now, the spirit that overrides John the Baptist and Elijah is Raphael. And the spirit that, evol that overshadows, um, uh, overshadowed Jesus was Michael. Jesus and Mary Magdalene was Michael. Um, but the thing is this, that what we're going to do is we're going to sing this, um, the Saint-Germain song, but we're going to sing it now for the, for the emerald emerald uh, light of, of Raphael because this is something that um, that our dear Jen has got through that we should be um, focusing at the moment on the emerald light of, um, of, of Raphael this is the time perfect to time to sing it yeah <laughs> Transmute all darkness in me. 
songs and it really helps all of us on this ascension journey because I know for myself I've been really plugged into the mystical frequencies and it's so powerful to have that physicist have someone like yourself just step in and understand the physics of ascension and the physics of manifestation and the physics of all this new technology that's coming in it's mm -hmm. it really really helps the right and left brain just merge and that is that is all part of the the awakening is the you know the, the end of duality and that the right and left brain of the you know the hemispheres of the brain and i really feel that our conversations do that and it's such a powerful medicine for all of us mm. um, and for everyone that's watching so on behalf of everyone that's watching we're so very very grateful to, to you David yeah. and we really truly love you and David's become part of our family and we're so um, overjoyed every time David comes to see us mm. and spend time and with just us. Rem remember that every subatomic particle in your body is a whirlpool a vortex of light that's just like a ball of wool it's spherical vortex and all that happens in ascension is that you accelerate the speed of energy in every vortex of your body and you just ascend into whatever dimension the, uh, the speed of the light takes you into. So it's a very, very simple process. The miracles are worked simply by condensing super energy through the vortices of matter. In, in the loaves and fishes, you have two, two, two fishes and five loaves and the super energy condenses through those those loaves and fishes as patterns and you get thousands of fishes and thousands of loaves and every 5,000 are fed and the 12 basketfuls left. You see that's how it works. Very simple technology. It's simply changing the speed of energy in the vortices of light. Yes. Boom shakalaka baby. Mm. Pure and unadulterated physics. The quantum so physics powerful. of the 21st century. Oh, we're so blessed. So please share this video, brothers and sisters. It's such an auspicious gift for, for people to receive this information. So be generous and kind and, yeah, and share this video. And get the Awakened book off Amazon, you know. You, mm. can, you can get it as e-books and stuff and just read up the physics so you understand what's happening. It's, it's easy to read. It's not difficult to understand. Excellent. Yeah. So on that note, we're just going to wrap it up. And just to say thank you so much to everyone. Thank you so much to David. Thank you to Liam. Yeah. Thank you to Archie. Thank you, Archie. thank you to me. Yeah. Thank you to the universe. Thank you to Mother, Father, God. Thank you to all the angelic realm, yeah. all the fairies and the elements. And also beings. remember, if you do get the book, you must read it backwards. I'm a backward boy. I wrote it back to front. So oh God, start the book seven and come to about six and book five. You've got to so be a weird. backward boy and girl and read the book backwards, not forwards. Otherwise, oh your brains will fry with the physics too <sighs> soon. You see. Fascinating. Please start with the chapter. Start, start with book seven, yeah. then read book six, then read book five, then read book four, mm. then start at book one, two, and three. Okay, on it, David. Simple stuff. And um, just want to say I'm very, very excited about the 2 2 transmission that's taking place. It's mm. so powerful. These groups are getting more bigger, and, and the yeah. global impact is just this is rippling out. And we're going to have our little bear, Archie. He's going to hold his space on the moon, doing big work on the moon. We're going to be doing huge work, working with taking over the moon and like really, really filling up the energy of the moon with the forces of light, of angelic mm. light. Um, it's massive work that we're being guided to do by the Alliance. Yeah, the moon is a mirror. It's up there for our use. We can simply beam up 
uh, the light, the, the, the thoughts, whatever we want to the moon, and the moon will reflect it back at the full moon time. So rather than leave the full moon for the lunatics, let's use the full moon as a mirror for our divine mm. energies. And clean up the bases. There's clean a lot up the of, base energies, there's a lot yeah. of, Well, no, there's a lot of galactic, there's a lot of reptiles that like living on the moon and stuff like that. Literally, yeah. there are. The moon is hollow, and it's like a big, massive yeah. city of... Absolutely. Yeah, so we are being called in to assist with this takeover of light. Mm -hmm. We're going to, like, take back the moon. So this is a massive call, brothers and sisters, for all the star seeds. Especially the full moon uh, in the Holy Week. On the 8th of April, very important. We, we can practice it in the full moons leading up to that, but let's really hit it with the April full and, moon. Yeah, and so looking forward to seeing so many of you on the 2-2 going to be such an amazing transmission and um and all those that sign up please read the pdf because it's not going to be in the event is happening group um and yeah we're really really looking forward to being with everyone and working with the energies of in bulk working with the energies of bridget of bridey who is the guardian spirit of this land and she's guiding me to do an embodiment of bridget so that's going to be very interesting to experience an embodiment blessing so yeah, really, really looking forward to um, joining many of you for the 2-2 in bulk transmission, which is going to be at 8.08 p.m. UK time on Sunday. Lovely. So see you Good. all there, and I'll post the link to book, and um, I'll post the link to David's book. And yeah, um, yeah namaste. We love you namaste. all. Namaste. Love you all. Mwah. Love you. Mm -hmm.